Hey all you physicists, welcome to the next episode or lesson in the uh, modern physics playlist and today we're going to be talking about the momentum of a photon. Now in the last episode or lesson we talked about the Compton effect and let me uh, restate what the, what the effect was. Basically we have a photon that hits and collides with an electron and what happens is that we found out that due to Compton we found out that the photon acts as a particle and due to that it follows the laws of conservation of momentum and therefore because of this both the electron and the photon are scattered and we know that the photon after has a longer wavelength than the photon before okay but since um since Compton found out that a photon has momentum but how can a photon have momentum if it doesn't have mass because we know from uh, from from theories and experiments and, and it has been proven by Einstein that a photon doesn't have mass but since we know that the um, equation for momentum equals p momentum equals to its mass times the velocity we know that momentum requires mass but since a photon doesn't have mass how does it have a momentum so Compton was thinking about this was thinking about this and he came out with this formula what he did was he combined Einstein's famous e equals mc squared together with the and this isn't really a plus it's just a it's not really an addition I'm just saying plus um, Einstein's energy of a photon he combined these together and what he came out with was this since we know that e equals mc squared and e equals hf we can equate both these, all of these together because E of a photon and E of a photon. So what he did was he combined these together and he got mc squared equals hf just simply by putting these two together. And we can find out um, a photon's theoretical mass by rearranging. So let's bring the c squared down and we have hf over c squared. Now we know that a photon doesn't have mass but if we wanted, if we wanted to find out a photon's theoretical mass this will be what this will be the equation for it okay so what he did next was he used this formula and plugged it in so we have p equals mv for the, the basic um, momentum formula and he plugged m into it so what we have next is p equals to hf over c squared times v but what is the speed of a photon Photons always travel at a speed of light because they are light, so its speed would be c. So what can we do here? We can cancel out the c's, and what do we have? We have p equals to hf over c, which is the equation for the momentum of a photon. And then, how about if you want to relate this um, momentum to the photon's wavelength? Because we know that the Compton effect dealt with the wavelengths before and after the collision. So let's put in a little wavelength in here, and it's pretty obvious how we can incorporate this in here. And if you have no idea, well, let me um, refresh your mind with this. Maybe this will prompt something. The universal wave equation for light. C equals lambda f. The speed of light equals to the wavelength of the light times its frequency. And we can rearrange this to find that lambda equals to C over f. And we know that C over f is located somewhere inside this equation just that it's flipped so let's flip both sides and we get 1 over lambda equals to f over c and we plug this right in and what do we get p equals to h multiplied by f over c which is 1 over lambda and we get momentum of a photon equals to h over the wavelength of the photon and this is Compton's equation for the momentum of a photon. So hope, hopefully you guys can see how we uh, derived the equation for the, moment, the momentum of a photon even though a photon doesn't have mass and we did this by using um, the wavelength of the photon and, you, and, and as you can see there's no mass anywhere in this equation so it works perfectly. So yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.